It's a Sony TTF-1UB with no power. Let's crack on. Hello and welcome to another Mr. Beats Bike video and this one's a little bit different insofar as we're looking at the Sony TTF-1 and uh, this is a companion unit to the Sony SLF-1 uh, portable Betamax um, video recorder and this one has the um, oh so common fault of being completely dead and I'm pretty confident I know what's wrong with it. Uh, it's probably going to be the um, two capacitors on the primary side of the power supply 350 volts, uh, 47 microfarad, 4.7, I can never remember which one it is. Um, I get muddled between the power supplies, to be honest. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, they've probably gone gone bad, gone leaky, physically leaky, and um, would have sorted out the power supply, the uh, transistors in the primary side. Uh, so, this machine's been sent in for repair uh, from a good friend of the channel, Eric. Hi Eric, hope all is well with you. And uh, I still have your remote control, which uh, we agreed I was going to send back um, with this. Save on the postage and also uh, protection as well. So... Uh, we shall do that. That's the um, that's the remote control unit that we fixed, changed the chip on. Um, that plugged into a tape deck, so that was actually quite a cool repair. Um, and it'd be quite nice to see how that does actually perform with the tape deck, because we weren't able to te actually test it with a tape deck, even though we we got uh, output from it. So uh, yeah, continue to take this apart and. Uh, we will crack on. So I am slightly concerned um, on two counts. One is because I just strained the uh, that board there, which I believe is the um, the power supply start circuit. So yeah, um, it has had it has had the transistor the. Um, capacitors changed but it hasn't had the transistors changed so I wonder what's happened there uh, 4.7 of I, I don't know if it's me that did this I'm assuming it is 
Um, oh, I don't know though. It doesn't look like my kind of capacitor that I would fit. Yeah, they, those look like something cheap and nasty. I don't know. Um, the other thing that slightly gives it away that probably wasn't me uh, is um, the heatsink compound. Don't know. Maybe I've I've done this, but um, those capacitors don't look like mine. Anyway, I'm going to whip them out and let's have a look. Let's just double check just why that's... Oh my, I was warming up. Just double check we've got no voltage on the mains cap shouldn't do because these have bleed resistors. Yeah, nothing at all. Absolutely nothing at all. Just wonder what's happened here. Um, get to legs we can get to. Hmm. I'm not short. Um, I don't think you can get to them from the top because of the heat sink. Pick off the glue. They might actually be worth powering this up if um, he's check all right. Let's see what's happening. I have had um, one other of these out of the many I've repaired, where it was actually the startup circuit that had gone faulty. And uh, I just wonder if maybe this might be a similar thing. Maybe the startup circuits are starting to get a little bit flaky. Yeah, that's that's dead short. That's dead short. So we have actually got some other good ones here. Let's just check. These are good. That's looking good. And do a diode check. Yeah. And yeah, should be nothing the other way. Super. Okay, so they're good. So let's whip out these capacitors. Chemets. So I think I must have had this in before then. I think that's the startup circuit in there actually. Yeah, it's in that. Um, let me just pop this lid. So that's that's the start circuit. Um, sort of when you first power it on, it kicks on the. Um, the oscillator for the power supply. Actually looks a little bit cooked. In fact, it looks like something, it's wet. 
capacity. It looks. Can't quite see. It looks like a capacitor's gone. Ooh. That's wet there. Some um that cover. It's a bit slimy, you can see where it's sort of slimed up the side of the plastic cover. It's also it's got very hot. Um, I don't know whether that's an indication of anything, that's the enamel there is, <clears throat> I'd say that's fine, can't see any problem with that, it looks like it's got really hot, because this is all sort of quite fluid as well, I mean is that, a, is that an age thing? But this looks... Quite not happy. I have not known the last time <laughs> I had a startup circuit for. I had, I didn't know. I well, I didn't have it blow the. Um, the transistors it just didn't start so i think what i'll do um i will take this board out and we'll have a look at that um i'll clean up all of this get these transistors desoldered as well clean up the um the glue the extra glue and uh, take it from there i suppose uh, i will compare these with a new pair probably won't use chemat again I'll use a, a different brand. I think I've got some other ones. I think I've got some 350 volt ones, which is what they're rated at anyway. Um, and uh, we'll take it from there to see, see what we can find. Let's crack on. Well, <laughs> it's, it's got pretty hot in here, I think. Um, the whole power supply seems to have got quite hot. Um, but um, I did test the two large transistors. Well, I'd check that one as well. Uh, they all check fine. Um, this one's a standard transistor. This one's a BJT. Uh, it's a diode across it. Um, so it was testing sort of as having a sort of a diode drop then both ways across the else two legs. But that's absolutely fine. Um, but the capacitor is 2.2 microfarad, 2.2 yeah, 2 microfarad, uh, 50 volt. That has an ESR of 140 ohms. Um, so that that is not happy. It still reads okay, but yeah, it's not happy at all. So um, I'm going to very carefully push these back, or push this one back. Because it needs to be fairly fat for the case to fit over the top. And then I have cleaned off some of the flux, but my goodness. And these don't do very well with isopropyl either. It tends to um, damage the, the varnish to an extent. I mean, it's okay. I've, I've cleaned it off, like I said, I've cleaned it off a bit with isopropyl, but it's still absolutely coated in flux. Absolutely crazy. And this side too. Uh, everything else seems okay. Um, just doing a basic check um, with a diode, uh, with with the meter, just on diode. All the diodes read okay. I mean, there's Zeta diodes in there as well, um, which aren't short anyway or open. So yeah, it's only really that capacitor that seems to be bad, um, but. Like I say, the meter is is not just because the meter says it's okay doesn't mean it is. So uh, yeah, I'm going to solder that back in, change that capacitor, and uh, take it from there. So uh, yeah, let's crack on. 
So, um, done a few bits without showing it on camera, but I've changed that one capacitor that was really crazy ESR on the um, on the starter board. Um, these two transistors, they're, they're actually okay. Um, I forget that these have um, a resistor across them. Um, so, uh, base to emitter. Um, so, that's why they appear to be short, when actually they're not. I did actually uh, test them out of circuit, and they're, they're absolutely fine. So, um, yeah, I've put them back in, and they should be good to go. I can't find anything else wrong with it, other than that one capacitor. Um, I've, I have replaced these two um, 4.7 350-volt which is what these are and what the originals were um for what it's worth but they weren't bad um so esr wise the uh the others the the canets that i took out were fine really um not wouldn't cause a problem so yeah but i've changed them anyway the these i find are a little bit more sort of um a slightly better quality i think in my humble opinion but uh yeah we should be good to go this should start up so uh yeah um as you can see the the cables are long enough to actually run this outside of the uh the actual unit itself which is very very useful i've put the plastic um backing back on uh plastic tray so we should be able to just power this up and uh Everything will be fantastic, hopefully. Let's crack on. Okay, so let's give it a power test. Let's make sure this is on. Yeah, so we should be good to go. Let's go and plug it in. Oh, that's encouraging. Super. So I'll just get it all back, put back together, and um, I don't know whether I've actually got an F1 that I can test this with, but uh, anyway, I'll, I'll <laughs> try and find, find one and we'll give it a test. Let's crack on. Okay, so it's all back together, and uh, I'm truly back together, and I found this F1. I have no idea what's wrong with it, so uh, yeah, let's, let's give it a go, I suppose. Um, I had a feeling it was okay, but uh, yeah, there we go, it works. Um, I'm not even going to bother trying a tape, to be honest, it it was a power supply issue. Um, so, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it works absolutely fine. It's all good. So I just wanted to check that I did actually have, um, well, I've obviously got a servo problem on the, on the F1, but it works. It's outputting a, outputting a signal. So, uh, but yeah, we'll have a look at this F1, uh, at some point. And, uh, yeah, I was just in the tracking it seems to have sorted it. So yeah, that probably does just need a service maybe, but we'll look at this. Um, so I have got another power supply, um, which I bought ages ago, that has exactly the same faults, and, um, yeah, I tidied it up, and that's as far as I got. I sort of didn't do much more with the actual diagnostic side of the, um, I'm sure that was the, uh, the start circuit as well, so we'll have a look at that, and then probably have a look at this, so, uh, with that, I hope you enjoyed this one. It's a bit of a, a shorter one, but uh, yeah, we got there in the end. Thank you very much for watching and uh, look forward to seeing you in another video. Bye for now.